السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times. We live in an era of mass distraction. There are so many different things that are constantly competing for our attention and time. Our hearts and minds are easily distracted. It's easy to be pulled away from our real true purpose in life. And one of the most powerful forces that is constantly pulling on our hearts is the dunya, the love of material things. One of the most consuming and powerful diseases of the heart is love of the world, hubbu dunya Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, hubbu dunya ra'su kulli khati'a. Love of the world is the origin of every sin. That's a very profound statement. That if a person were to get to the root cause of every single sin, they will find that it is the love of this world. It is the reason for that one unlawful glance. It is the reason for cheating on that one exam. It is the reason for backbiting. It is the reason for missing Fajr yesterday. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks to this reality in Surah Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْفِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ The love of worldly desires has been made appealing to people. Women, children, treasures of gold and silver, fine horses, cattle, and fertile land. These are the pleasures of this worldly life, but with Allah is the finest destination. In this one single verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has grouped together some of the most powerful and enjoyable pleasures of this life. Women, or it could just be attraction to the opposite gender, sexual desires, children, endless wealth, fine horses, which in the modern era could be like really expensive fancy cars, property. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the love of these worldly desires has been made appealing to us as human beings, meaning they are innate. These desires are part of human nature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives examples. And these are examples that all of us can relate to, right? Women, children, treasures of gold and silver, fine horses, cattle, fertile land, anything material that we are attracted to as human beings. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with these innate and natural desires. Now Islam, it doesn't require us to completely suppress them. Rather, it provides guidance on how to control them and fulfill these desires within the boundaries and limits of the Sharia. We are taught how to regulate, moderate, and control these desires. That we are supposed to control our desires and not be controlled by them. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, الْكَيِّسُ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ وَعَمِلَنِ مَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْعَاجِزُ مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ the clever, intelligent person is the one who subjugates his soul and works for what is after death. And the incapable is the one who follows his desires and has false hopes in Allah. That is why it is so important to strive and struggle against our soul, to fight against our desires, to avoid temptations and to really, really subjugate our nafs. And the Prophet ﷺ, he describes those who struggle and fight against their souls as mujahids. Al-mujahidu man jahada nafsahu fi ta'atillah. That the real mujahid is the one who struggles against their soul in the obedience of Allah. Now in this passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us one method, one way 
of regulating, controlling, and subjugating our desires by reminding us that all of these comforts, pleasures, and luxuries are temporary and fleeting. That the comforts, pleasures, and luxuries of the life to come are eternal and everlasting. We are being reminded that chasing after these material things, spending our time, energy, and effort in the pursuit of these enjoyments at the expense of the hereafter is not worth it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to change our outlook and perspective on life, to recognize and internalize that chasing after the life of this world is not worth it. And that is why, after mentioning all of these desires and comforts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا These are the fleeting pleasures of this worldly life. All of these things that we're distracted by, all of these things that I'm chasing after, they are temporary pleasures of this worldly life. Wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab, and with Allah is the finest destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells the Prophet sallallahu to tell his companions, to tell his community and his followers of what is far better than any of these fleeting things. قُلْ أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّنْ ذَلِكُمْ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ قُلْ Say, O Prophet, أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّنْ ذَلِكُمْ Shall I inform you of what is better than all of this? Of what's better than all of these shahawat? What's better than all of these material pleasures, comforts, luxuries, and enjoyments? لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Those mindful of Allah the people of taqwa will have gardens with their Lord, beneath which rivers flow, to stay there forever. وَأَزْوَاجٌ mutahara And pure spouses, وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ Allah, Along with Allah's pleasure. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ And Allah is all-seeing of His servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the people of taqwa, those who are mindful, conscious, and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both in public and in private, who control and suppress their desires in the life of this world, will be rewarded with eternal happiness. They will be rewarded with never-ending bliss. They will have gardens with their Lord beneath which rivers flow to stay there forever. Your spouses, along with Allah's pleasure, Wallahu basirun bil ibad. And Allah is all-seeing of His servants. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us a detailed description of who these ibad are. Who are these individuals that have taqwa? What are their qualities? What are their characteristics? What are their values? الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Those who pray, those who supplicate, our Lord, we have believed. So forgive our sins and protect us from the torment of the fire. This highlights their connection with their Lord and Creator. It shows that they are people of taqwa. They first state that they are believers and then they appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the strength of that faith to forgive their sins and protect them from the fire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them with five distinct qualities and characteristics. And each of these qualities is an essential value that forms part of the Muslim personality, the Muslim identity. And we can have entire series on each of these qualities. Right. The first is patience. Right. The first quality is patience. Uh, they are people of sabr. Now sabr, it's usually translated as patience, but this translation is under-inclusive. Sabr includes patience, but it also includes strength, steadfastness, 
perseverance, endurance, forbearance, self-restraint, self-control, and being content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being a person of sabr means being able to endure and persevere through hardships and difficulties without complaints, to be firm and steadfast, readily fulfilling our responsibilities towards Allah and others, submitting ourselves to Allah, and accepting whatever happens to us as part of Allah's plan. The second is that they are people of sidq, truthfulness. They are truthful both in speech and behavior. A sidq means that the external condition of a person conforms to their internal condition. Their speech, behavior, actions, and deeds conform to the faith and belief in their heart. Their internal condition doesn't contradict their actions, and their actions don't contradict their internal conditions. In colloquial terms, it can be described as being real. Having sit, it means being real. Our outer actions correspond with our inner states. For example, if we stand in prayer with apparent humility, our mind should not be wandering around. The third quality is obedience or devotion. That their loyalty and devotion are to Allah and Allah alone. It means submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in devotion, worship, obedience, and servitude. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, excellence, and humility. The fourth quality is generosity. And the fifth quality is seeking forgiveness. These are the five qualities of the people of taqwa that are highlighted in this passage. The people of taqwa who prefer the life of the hereafter over the life of this world. And these are qualities that we need to nurture and develop within ourselves. These are the qualities that will help us remain focused on our real purpose in life. These qualities will help us control our desires and stay away from distractions. And the foundations uh, or the foundation of these qualities is taqwa. So once again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make each and every single one of us among the people of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us sabr and sidq. May He make us among those who are obedient. May He make us extremely generous. And may He make us among those who seek His forgiveness. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته